Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for coming, and hope you had a good lunch. Um, we are from Rodi, and we're here today to talk to you about an easier way to get to a rich catalog in Backstage. What do we mean by rich catalog? Well, a catalog that has the information that you're trying to look up, right? So I'm Sam, um, and this is Irma. We're both engineers at Rodi. Who's Rodi? Well, we've been there from the start of Backstage as an open source project. Um, we're still top contributors to the project, and we've released about 19 plugins and plenty more scaffolder actions to the open source community. But what does Rodi actually do as a company? Well, we have a hosted version of Backstage that is easily configurable and has a ton of extra features, which is really oriented around making it easier to adopt Backstage um, and also a lot faster to adopt Backstage. So what's the problem that we're talking about here today? Well, I imagine that plenty of you in the audience have either used Backstage regularly or have used it before. And I'm sure that pretty much all of you will have seen something like this before. When you've come to an entity and you're trying to find out some information, but hey, there's no annotation for it. So we can't find any information for this entity, right? So this can apply to all sorts of different plugins. Um, and all these plugins rely on some information in the YAML file to actually connect to the third party source of information. And it's very common that that is missing. So this is kind of a frustrating experience, right? Now, as a good citizens, as I'm sure you all are, your thought as developers might be, well, let's try and fix this, OK? Um, so you've come to find some information, but hey, I might, might as well just fix this while I'm at it. Now, what does that journey actually look like in Backstage at the moment? So if we're talking about entities that are sourced from a YAML file in your SEM, that's probably going to mean you need to open a pull request to the SEM to fix that YAML, right? So what does that look like? Well, first of all, there's an easy way to open pull requests. Some of you might actually not know this, so take notes. Um, if you go to the About card and you click the pencil icon, you'll go straight to a web-based editor. For instance, in GitHub, it looks a bit like this. And you can write your YAML annotation straight into there, right? Now, we know what the key to this YAML, uh, this, this annotation is. So let's, let's take an example, say, PagerDuty, OK? So we want to fix the PagerDuty plugin. And PagerDuty needs to know what service this entity is connected to. So it's going, you're going to need to enter a PagerDuty service ID annotation. So let's add that uh, key. But then, hold on, we need to know the value, right? So what's the, what's the service ID? Well, we're going to have to go to PagerDuty, right? So let's log into PagerDuty. Hopefully, you know the address of your organization's PagerDuty instance. And hopefully, you've got access to it, right? So we're going to sign in. And we're going to go to services in PagerDuty. And hopefully, it's going to be easy to find that service for the entity that you're looking up. Now, as you are probably are aware, in large organizations, naming conventions aren't always strictly followed. And so, yeah, you're going to have to maybe do some scrolling. Let's say you find that service. So then we open up the service. And we're looking for a service ID. Where is the service ID? Well, in this case, it's actually not there. So we're going to click around some tabs. We might go to the settings tab, but it's actually not there. Um, and so as engineers, if you're an engineer, you might be familiar with looking at the URL, right, for an ID. So in this case, the URL looks like this. So I'm going to be like, well, that looks a little bit like a service ID um, with that uh, address. Let's copy and paste that and try that out. So we're going to go back to GitHub in this case. And we're going to enter that service ID into our YAML. 
Then we're going to open up our pull request. We're going to give it a title, a description, open it up, and now we need to get someone to review that pull request. So we'll have a look through a list of rev potential reviewers, maybe assign some people, or we might go into, say, Slack or some kind of team messaging service and ping a channel and say, hey, can you have a look at this pull request and review it for me? And then we come back to Backstage. And what we see is still our missing annotation page. And we might be seeing that for a few hours. We might be seeing that for a few days. We might be seeing that for weeks. Because we're not really sure when that pull request is going to get reviewed. And we're not really sure when it's actually going to get merged. And the likelihood is that it's probably quite low on your radar, right, to keep an eye on that pull request and make sure it gets merged and follow it up. And so you might not even know when it gets merged. So this is the problem that we have at the moment with Backstage, where you've got a catalog of information, and it's often incomplete. And the path to actually fixing that information is a fairly slow path that involves a massive context change from what you are actually doing, which is trying to just find some information in the first place, right? So you're actually going to have to go to the third party source where you could have got that information from anyway uh, and do a whole bunch of steps in order to fix this. And so the likelihood is that you're not going to bother, right? You're just going to carry on with your day and not going to fix anything. And this is a problem, right? Because your catalog is not going to be a rich catalog if your engineers are just navigating away from these problems because they can't be bothered. And I don't blame people for not being bothered. I, I can't be bothered most of the time either. So this actually is the happy path of this whole scenario because you have a YAML file and you can actually add that information. But a lot of entities in the catalog are not actually pulled in from YAML files, as you might be aware. For instance, if you think about groups and, and users in Backstage, most, most organizations are pulling those in automatically from a third party, like GitHub Teams or Okta or whatever it is. And that's running through a processor, right? So, oh, sorry, a provider. So a provider is taking those, that information from the API in GitHub and creating entities in your catalog for you. And that's great because it means you can build up a, a pretty good map of groups and users, and they're all connected, and that's nice. But what happens if you want to actually add some information to those groups? So this is like an example of a, a group that has been pulled in from GitHub Teams, OK? So we've got a title, the name of the, sorry, the, name of the group. We've got a d short description. And then we've got the relationships, like the users and the relationships. So that's kind of OK. But hold on a minute. If you're coming to Backstage to find the owner of some software, and you end up in this, on this page, how do I contact that owner? Like, I know I've got a team name. That's all I've got to go off, right? It's not particularly useful. Um, so to fix this, we would want to like, add links, maybe, to Slack. We'd want to add some markdown to, for a, big, a better description of what the team is actually responsible for, et cetera. And we'd want to add to maybe some contact information, um, like an email address. But we can't actually do this in Backstage at the moment. This is actually not possible on a, on a per, in, per entity basis. And that's because it's sourced from a provider, and that provider is automated. And there isn't a way to individually update these, these entities in the catalog. So I say there isn't a way. I mean, there is kind of a way. Like, you can write a processor. Um, and this is true of the YAML files as well. You can write a processor that tries to do some mapping from your third party API. So let's go back to the PagerDuty example. We can go to PagerDuty, say, give me all the, your services, and let's try and make an educated guess about the naming convention that you're using for PagerDuty, and try and map those to entities in your catalog. And you might be able to do that, OK? If your organization has a naming convention that's strictly adhered to, that might just about work. 
But the reality is, for most organizations and most of these plugins, the data does not map cleanly. And furthermore, you might well be making mistakes when you're actually trying to do automated mappings like this, which is potentially even more problematic than not having the information there in the first place, because you're going to be showing information for a third party service which isn't, shouldn't be connected to this entity. And that's kind of pretty painful, right? So processes, okay, might be a potential solution. And similarly, we could also just, instead of doing it uh, behind the scenes in a processor, we might want to write a script and open a bunch of PRs to fix this. But this is the same problem in terms of the mapping not being reliable. And you've also adding in then the PR process, right? So you've got this, like, this delay in actually getting the information into the catalog. So what's our solution to this problem? Yeah, so uh, we were thinking about creating something efficient and something sustainable. And we had to make easy and a straightforward uh, solution. So we were thinking of reducing context switching and uh, decreasing time uh, you have to wait uh, for your coworkers to approve any changes, for example, that you may make. So we were also thinking uh, from the point of uh, which uh, are the biggest pain for our customers and for ourselves. And we came up with following. So as Sam has mentioned and showed earlier, uh, this missing annotation screen is something that we all uh, came across, but solving it is uh, energy consuming, time consuming, and very often you need to go to several places in order to fix it. So that's naturally where we started. So um, we worked on improving uh, PagerDuty uh, plugin card. and. Uh, we basically wanted to allow users to automatically generate service ID from PagerDuty retrieved through API so they don't have to go through the path that was described earlier. And uh, in action, it looks like this. So I think that we can all agree that this is much faster than uh, going to PagerDuty, obtaining service ID, and you know, like going through all of uh, different kind of scenarios that you would normally need to go. Now, furthermore, furthermore, just a second. Uh. Yeah. Sorry, okay. So we were also thinking about the place uh, where you end up most of your time and where you spend majority of your time. And catalog seemed like a good place to start. So we wanted to improve functionalities that you have there by allowing you to uh, inline edit uh, properties. And uh, it also relies on a functionality that uh, we worked on where we improved and modified the backstage catalog table. So it can kind of, uh, yeah, that we can expand the feature on it more. So what you would be able to do is basically do an inline editing without the uh, need to edit YAML files, to create PRs, to go through the whole process, but instead just change it here. So uh, as you could see in this video, you basically just assign owner or any other property that you may need. Now, of course, uh, in catalog, you don't have all of the information that component has. So there was a need to create something separately. And we worked on a concept called Entity Decorator, which is basically an editing form in which you can add or edit properties such as, such as tags, labels, or annotations, so things which you uh, usually don't see in catalog. So for example, set of annotations seen here is generated uh, directly uh, from uh, annotations used in components across catalog that uh, you use and enriched with some default ones uh, that we have added uh, for the plugins. Now, the biggest impact we have seen is uh, in uh, decreasing time to change, which now uh, is a few seconds compared to day or even days before. And that, in addition to 
no contact switching, so ability to use the centralized approach in which, which uh, you can change everything just at one place led us to our end goal, which was uh, having richer catalog, which holds only information and actions uh, you actually need. So how do we actually build this, and what does it look like? So I'll, I'll talk you briefly through the back end and what, how you could actually implement something like this relatively easily. Um, so to start with, we've got an API where we can post something we call fragments. Um, so a fragment is just uh, an ob object with metadata and some spe a spec object um, and an entity ref uh, that it's associated with, right? So we can post that and we created a new table in the database uh, where we can store that information. So we've got some auditing information and versioning as well there. And then we've got our processor. So we were talking about processors earlier, right? So this is just a processor that uh, goes through each entity in your catalog and says, hey, do we have, any, uh, do we have a fragment for this to, to decorate? And if it finds one, it's going to merge in that, uh, that information. And the end result is you've got a working plugin within a few seconds. So there's nothing particularly revolutionary here, right? We're just using processes, which are a core part of Backstage, and already do a lot of uh, decoration work um, on your entities. Um, and here, instead of uh, the source being uh, a third-party API and some automated uh, uh, service, you're just using user-inputted data, right? So that's what it looks like. Now, I'm sure some of you in the audience who work on Backstage have got some, some questions in your mind already about this approach. Um, and one of them, I imagine, might be, well, we started off with a GitOps approach, right, with some YAML in an SCM. And now we've got this fragment in a database. So we've got this hybrid, right, of data and two sources of information. So you might be thinking, well, when I'm trying to update some information in the catalog, how do I know what, where to update it? So we've got a partial solution to this, which is trying to make it more visible to developers where this information is actually coming from. So this is the ent entity inspector, which you might be familiar with, which shows you uh, details about an entity. And as you can see here, that we've got some icons for stuff that uh, Backstage itself has actually injected. Um, uh, these are kind of annotations which the rest of the process relies on. We've also got some things that Rodi's added via this fragments decorator. Uh, so in this case, PagerDuty and Sneak. And we've got some things that came from a uh, third party source, i.e. the SEM. Um, and yeah, for, for instance, the GitHub, uh, GitHub annotations, you can see there. So this kind of helps people figure out where this information is coming from. Now, another potential thing you might be thinking is, hey, this sounds a lot like vendor lock-in, right? You're taking my data and you're storing it in a database, and how am I going to access that when I want to move? Well, we give you an API um, and access to all of your entities so you can pull that data and do what you want with it. So that hopefully addresses that, that problem. So we're pretty excited about this feature. Um, it feels like it unlocks a lot of new opportunities in Backstage to do things in a way which feels much more natural for users, right? Um, so we're going to give you a little, little idea about what kind of things we're building at the moment um, with this new functionality and this new approach. So the first thing that we wanted to do is allow people to fix these annotations, uh, but on a much larger scale, right? So you can imagine that it's useful for individuals to be able to fix things quickly on a single entity. But what if you're an organization coming in and saying, hey, I want to set up PagerDuty for my organization. I'm going to have to go and update thousands and thousands of entity uh, YAML files 
all in one go. And that's going to take potentially years, right? And that, that is the experience of many of our customers. It does take months, if not years, to, to get to this level of completeness in their catalog. And so we're, we're building features like this, which will allow people to go through a list um, of entities and basically, in a similar way to what we just saw, uh, we have a list of page duty services, and we can just uh, associate those um, with a few clicks and save it. And that would then just uh, update our catalog, and we'll have working page duty plugins for these, these uh, entities within a few seconds. What else are we doing? So. I mean, this kind of unlocks some cool things like ownership. Okay, so we've we're, at Rody, we're very we're interested in this this problem of richness, like helping you get a rich catalog which has working plugins. But we're also interested in helping you get a complete catalog, right? And part of that has been pulling in repositories as a kind uh, to the catalog, so that you can see immediately what what repositories you have in your SEMs. Um, and an important part of that is knowing who actually owns that repository, right? Now, we've, this is our repository table in our catalog, um, where, which we automatically generate. And we've added this button in the owner field, which allows you to, in one click, just add an owner, right? And this, we're, we're pre-populating this based on figuring out who's contributing to the repository already and which teams have uh, access to that repository and what level of access they have. So we're making an educated guess on that and allowing you to just go through and just uh, add, add ownership to these, these entities. Uh, here's a little clip of it in action. So yeah, I can just click these and we're going to update our catalog immediately. So that's pretty cool, and, and we're quite excited about the future of, uh, of this and expanding this into different areas of the product. Um, and we feel that it's, much, it's, a, it's a much more natural f field to like, see Backstage as, a, as a, kind of a place you can update information immediately, right? rather than having to go through these convoluted flows or being blocked completely because of where your entity happens to come from. So I think I'm going to pause there and see if there's any questions from you guys. Great. Test, test. Yes, we're on. Hello. Do you have any plans to add uh, some feature regarding closing the loop, basically propagating automatically the information back to the catalog YAML file in yeah. an async way? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what we're, we're looking at at the moment, um, is this idea of like raising pull requests. So when you create a fragment, you automatically raise a pull request to the SEM that that entity is originally sourced from. And you can have a, a series of numbered pull requests, and you merge them in the right order. And then you can have, you're reconciling your, your other source. But it, yeah. Any plans to open source the plugin? Yeah, um, at the moment, we're not, we're not going to open source it. And we're still kind of building it out. Um, and I'm not sure about what, what that will look like in the future. Um, but for the moment, unfortunately not. Um, but as you saw, as, as I showed you with the back end, it's, it's relatively straightforward to build this. I mean, it's just a custom processor um, and an API and a new table in the, in the database. Um, so yeah. Any other questions? Uh, one on the back. Best? Oh, now it's working. Uh, thank you for the insights for this plugin. Uh, one question clarification, because you mentioned about the vendor locking. So there is no possibility of using the database that we are already having. It has to be a database that is hosted somewhere by you? No, no. Uh, this, you can, anyone can build this um, just using existing database. Um, we just added a table to the catalog uh, database. Um, okay. And that's what, all you need to do, really. OK, yeah. thanks. Any others? 
Great. All right. Oh, this. No, okay. All right, well, thank you very much for listening. Um, we hope you found that interesting. Um, we're roadie and we're here helping people adopt backstage quicker and more effectively. Um, we're just outside the entrance there, so please come and say hi and chat to us um, if you've got any interesting stories about your own adoption journeys. Um, we're here for the whole conference uh, at booth D34. So yeah, if you can't make it today, see you later. Um, we've got some nice little ducks, which you might have already picked up. Um, so yeah, you can do some rubber ducking. And thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.